So is my slide visible and uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, visible, sir. You are yeah. audible also. Uh, so, friends, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, here uh, I'll be giving a brief overview about uh, finger millet and little millet. And uh, as we have audience, uh, uh, mostly from universities as well as from also from uh, like uh, FPOs and other people. So I also wanted to give some overview about the crop production also. So I'll be covering uh, both uh, uh, the basics of uh, these two crops and also uh, I'll be giving the overview of the crop production as well. So uh, coming to, I'll be explaining first the finger millet uh, and then I'll be explaining about the uh, little millet. So, Coming to finger millet, uh, so finger millet, uh, as you all know, uh, it is also one of the major millet uh, next to pearl millet, sorghum. Uh, and uh, this finger millet uh, is known uh, in different names. So mostly it is called ragi in southern India. And in northern part, it is called as Nachni, mandua. And in Tamil Nadu, especially it is called as uh, kelvarago. And in Orissa, it is called as mandua, mandia. Yeah. So this uh, finger millet is a, uh, scientifically it is a, means what we call it as a tetrapod species. So we have two genomes, A and B genomes, and uh, ploid is 2 and 4x is 36. So coming to area, this finger millet, uh, globally it is cultivated on area about 2 to 2.5 million hectares. So in India, it is uh, grown about 1.2 million hectares, uh, and about which of uh, this 1.2 million hectares, 80% uh, of area is in one state, that is Karnataka. And uh, production is around 1.8 to 2 million tons in India. So coming to the major states, uh, Karnataka has the uh, largest area. So followed by Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and Odisha. So uh, this particular finger millet is a karif crop. Means uh, the sowing is taken mainly uh, during the June. Uh, but uh, there are uh, like uh, some uh, places where it is also grown under uh, rabi, especially in Karnataka. And now uh, many uh, states, they are also coming up, uh, taking up finger millet also in the uh, rabi season as well. So coming to importance of this crop, uh, as you see uh, on the right hand side, uh, uh, these are some of the advantages of uh, growing this particular crop, uh, especially for the farmer's point of view. Uh, comparing uh, across millets, uh, this is one uh, millet which is having the highest productivity. So here, as you can see, it is around 1600 kg per hectare, but uh, the actual potential is up to 4 to 5 tons per hectare. So uh, even in the farmer's field, especially in Karnataka, they are able to uh, take up up to 4 to 5 tons per hectare. Uh, coming to nutritional superiority, uh, like yesterday's uh, uh, Dr. Malati and Dr. Venkateshwarlo, they already explained about the uh, importance of millets, especially in the nutritional point of view. So uh, coming to finger millet, uh, suppose if uh, anyone asks you like in finger millet, what is that unique uh, uh, nutrient which is present uh, in a higher, uh, you can tell it is a calcium, that is a grain calcium. So the grain calcium is so high that uh, it is about 15 to 20 times higher as compared to any other cereal. So that is a unique uh, uh, nutritional quality of this particular finger millet. So apart from that, uh, 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 like farmers, they grow this uh, finger millet mainly for the grain, uh, but uh, the stover, uh, which is, that is the powder, which is from the uh, ragi, it is also equally important. And uh, uh, wherever farmers they're growing, they give equal importance for growth, uh, grain, and as well as for the powder. And uh, as compared to other uh, uh, cereals, uh, this is having very less uh, storage insect pest. And uh, there are some uh, very good reports where they are telling it can be, uh, it is one of the important food during, especially during famine, and uh, it is stored up to 50 years. So there are reports saying that. And uh, comparing uh, other millets, so this particular ragi doesn't have any uh, post harvesting because it is a naked grain directly. It can be made into flour and uh, consumed in variety of forms. And um, mainly farmer's point of view as compared to sorghum, especially in finger millet, uh, there is not much bird damage. So somehow like uh, uh, comparing other millets, uh, uh, bird damage is very less, but there are a few pockets where they have reported uh, there is to a certain extent bird damage, but overall uh, there is not much bird damage in this particular crop. So uh, this I was explaining, like uh, these are the different millets, uh, as you can see here, uh, followed by pearl millet, uh, jowar, and uh, we have finger millet, uh, which is having the highest area as well as consumption. And this has different uh, small millets. So as I was explaining, these are the different uh, nutritional benefits. Uh, uh, like like I was as I was mentioning, this is the quantity of uh, calcium which is present in uh, per hundred uh, gram of uh, grain. 
So it is uh, really highest uh, about 15 to 20 times. And uh, this has some of the reports, the health benefit, uh, benefiting properties, uh, which is present in this particular crop, uh, which has been reported in uh, many literatures. So it is having uh, a number of uh, nutritional benefits. Uh, coming to the area, so as I was mentioning, uh, uh, in finger millet, uh, as you can see, these are the uh, the blue one indicates the production uh, with regard to India, and uh, the orange one indicates the production with uh, regard to the rest of the world. So, as if you can see the finger millet, uh, you can see that is uh, about fifty percent of the production of the global production is from India, while the rest fifty three percent this is mainly include the eastern Africa where it is also. Uh, widely grown uh, and uh, in some uh, uh, adjoining uh, countries, especially in the uh, Sri Lanka and other uh, Nepal and other countries where it is also grown. So these are the, uh, the distribution of finger millet as well as other millets uh, in India. So as you can see, finger millet is also widely distributed. Uh, uh, it is uh, it can be grown from uh, the foothill of uh, Himalayas up to the plains. So it has a very wide adaptation. So, but the uh, uh, requirement, cultivar requirement may, may vary, but uh, the crop can be grown in a range of environmental condition. This, this I wanted to inform to the audience. So coming to the state-wise areas, area and production, as I was mentioning, Karnataka is the state which is having the highest uh, area as well as the production, as you can see here, followed by other states like Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Uttarakhand, and Odisha, where it's also grown. So coming to the productivity, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the productivity is uh, uh, ranges from uh, 1500 up to uh, 3000 uh, kg per hectare. So the potential is up to four to five tons per hectare. But uh, Tamil Nadu is one state which is uh, reporting the very highest productivity that is about up to uh, three tons per hectare. And the all India average is around uh, 1600 to 1700 kg per hectare. Uh, and uh, these are some of the states uh, as you can see the productivity across states. So coming to Odisha, as you can see here, it is having the lowest productivity, but uh, uh, during the last uh, three to four years uh, where uh, uh, the government is uh, very actively working on uh, uh, promoting the millets in the state, uh, we, there is a Odisha millet mission and now uh, there are several initiatives taken by the government and presently the productivity has improved and it is tuned up to 1000 kg per hectare. So these are different uh, uh, locations or the centers where uh, the research are being taken up, uh, especially in finger millet as well as in other millets. So uh, uh, these are uh, distributed across uh, different states. Uh, uh, so apart from that, uh, there are different voluntary centers. They are also working on uh, different millets. So uh, like uh, the farmers, wherever they are, uh, uh, there is a need for uh, seed or uh, any uh, input uh, uh, production uh, input so they can also contact these centers uh, where they can uh, they'll be able to assist to take up the production so coming to the biology uh, so this is uh, typical like how the finger millet uh, looks like uh, so this is uh, the name uh, finger millet uh, has come because uh, uh, it has uh, uh, fingers uh, the pan the panicle it uh, has a average of six to seven fingers so it is also called as spikes. So it appears like a boat's foot. But that's what it's written here. And this stem is a uh, like a compressed stem, like uh, as compared to the other uh, millets or other crops, uh, uh, where it is a circular uh, stem. But here it's a compressed stem, and it is typically glabrous. And uh, this is a tillering crop. Uh, average tillering is about four to five tillers, and it has the advantages uh, or the shallow uh, root system. So this may be of uh, importance, especially for uh, some. Uh, students or for academic purpose uh, like uh, uh, this particular crop has been domesticated uh, about 5000 years ago and uh, uh, if you see the origin uh, uh, this is the it is uh, having a uh, uh, indica as one of the progenitor and this uh, elicin indica is a weed which is commonly seen across uh, uh, everywhere so this is one of the progenitor and uh, the uh, b genome progenitor is not known and over years, uh, due to polyplodization and then uh, domestication, uh, uh, the present uh, Ericin Korakana subspecies is a Korakana, and uh, with a uh, diploid means it is a uh, tetraploid with 2n4x is equal to 36. So, again, uh, this particular crop has a different races and sub races. So again, may not be important to all. 
so but uh, here i'd like to mention is this is one uh, particular race that is vulgaris uh, and this also has different uh, sub races uh, so the uh, variety uh, the type which is widely grown is uh, the this from this particular race that is a vulgaris so these are again the different uh, wild species in uh, uh, figure millet there is uh, both uh, diploid and tetraploid and uh, there are uh, there is one more genome that is uh, uh, c genome is also there and d genome is also there and uh, few of the species are also perennial type so this particular uh, uh, slide explains about the variability available in the uh, finger millet this uh, has been uh, very well covered by dr ilongovan in the first presentation uh, where he has explained the uh, vast diversity which is existing in, in this particular crop. So here I would like to mention is that uh, these are the different uh, finger types especially like uh, this top portion is all the closed types what we call and uh, this particular one which is mostly resembles like a vulgaris type the top in curve we call it this is the one which is the, have the most number of varieties they belong to this particular type and at the bottom we have the open types so this particular type are also seen in the farmers field mainly in the form of land races but most of the varieties they come under this category because they also this compact types are also contributing to the yield of the crop so these are some of the important uh, panicle superior panicle types which can uh, give better yield especially while we take up selection we uh, look for this type of uh, finger types, especially for uh, identifying the superior finger millet lines. Uh, coming to the history of uh, genetic improvement, uh, uh, many of you may not be knowing, uh, but uh, this particular crop, the improvement has taken place as early as 1913, where uh, uh, selections were followed uh, uh, and then a number of varieties has been released. Uh, here I would like to mention uh, the phase 3, which is between 1964 to 1986. Uh, this is one of the remarkable phase in the history of finger millet improvement uh, because uh, uh, a scientist, uh, uh, Dr. Lakshmanaya, he is also called as uh, Ragi Brahma. Uh, so what he did is that uh, he crossed between the Indian varieties and the African varieties and a series of varieties got released during at that point of time that is they were called as Indaf varieties. So this uh, phase uh, brought up the quantum jump in productivity that is from 800 to 1000 kg per hectare up to 2200, 3000 kg per hectare. This uh, marks the remarkable phase in the history of the finger millet improvement. And subsequently many varieties have been released, especially for grain yield and uh, improvement for blast resistance. So this is again the different phases which is being really explained. So coming to, this is one uh, variety which was released during uh, 1990s, uh, especially the GPU-28 variety. This is still uh, grown in many of the farmers field, especially in Karnataka. So this particular variety uh, has a very stable yield across locations. And uh, at one point of time, this was occupying about 80% of the area in Karnataka. So mm, mainly because uh, this has... Uh, higher yield as well as uh, there is one more constraint in finger millet production that is a blast resistance. So this particular variety is uh, uh, stable, especially for finger and blast, neck blast resistance. Uh, next uh, part of my presentation uh, where I'll be covering up the uh, the required, like the production uh, part. Uh, uh, this particular slide uh, uh, explains you about the uh, climatic requirements and the soil requirements. So as I was mentioning, uh, this uh, finger millet can be grown in a range of environmental conditions as uh, it is evidenced uh, like in Uttarakhand where it is also grown and uh, in the uh, Karnataka where it is grown. So it can be grown both in the hills and as well as the uh, plains. So, uh, but uh, the temperature requirement uh, uh, like 28 to 38 degrees centigrade is more ideal for having a better expression of this crop. So, although there are some varieties which can also grow at a higher temperature, but uh, this is the temperature which where the crop can grow uh, very well. So, again, the minimum generation, uh, the minimum temperature for generation is about 10 to uh, 12 degrees centigrade. And the uh, soil also, uh, like it can also grow in a wide range of soil uh, conditions, but a well-drained alveolar soil or loamy soil uh, is most uh, suitable for taking up finger millet cultivation. Uh, coming to tillages, uh, this is uh, similar to as uh, followed in any other crop. Uh, so, like uh, initially it can be ploughed. Uh, and then uh, using a harrow, it can be, uh, uh, the plot size can be brought down and then uh, uh, finally leveled uh, field without uh, clots. So uh, the fine tilt of soil is one important because uh, these are all very small size seeds. Uh, so 
uh, for generation, uh, it is always better to have a fine tail. Uh, so for taking up uh, uh, like sewing, uh, it will be always better if you can take up uh, sewing in a wet cell. Like uh, once if you receive a rainfall, and then if you take up uh, the sewing, so uh, that will have a very good germination, uh, especially in all the small millets. Uh, coming to sewing methods, uh, uh, this is one uh, uh, millet where, uh, uh, apart from direct sewing, transplanting is also widely practiced. And uh, 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 so this is some of the requirements uh, for both the direct seeding as well as for the transplanting. Uh, so this is the size of the uh, uh, area which is required for uh, transplanting one hectare of area. And uh, you can add uh, like a compost and other FIM in the nursery so that you can have better expression of the seedlings. So around uh, 20 to 25 days uh, seedling would be ideal to transfer it to the main field. And almost uh, if uh, there is a uh, moisture in the soil, that is uh, when there is a rain uh, and then if the weather is a uh, cloudy, you can get almost 100% success with regard to the transplanting. So this is... Uh, uh, and the transplanting crop also induces uh, good tillering. Uh, so transplanting is one of the methods which we would uh, advise uh, for uh, having better expression of the crop. Uh, coming to, uh, so uh, during seedling stage, there are some uh, uh, soil borne and uh, seed borne diseases. Uh, generally, we get uh, some damping of type of symptoms. So, uh, you have options for both uh, fungicides, uh, both organic and uh, inorganic methods. So, like in some places, like in Odisha, where we see that uh, mostly uh, the crop is taken up under the organic condition. So, this uh, uh, particular recommendation would be more useful. Uh, so, this is also widely practiced in Odisha, where they are using combination of cow dung, cow dung cover, urine, and lime for taking up the seed treatment. And uh, uh, so we can also have, like if you want to go for inorganic uh, method of control, you can have this carbon enzyme. And now we have new molecules also. So this can be taken up uh, for seed treatment so that uh, we can avoid the uh, seedling damping off. So this is actually one of the problem which we found across uh, different places. Uh, coming to transplanting, as I was already, I was already mentioning, so, uh, so you can have a like, a, uh, field main field uh, manured uh, with uh, six to eight tons of uh, FIM, but it's uh, difficult to have it's a lot quantity. But uh, uh, this particular crop responds well to the organic input, so therefore, uh, uh, if it is possible, we can have more uh, quantity of FIM so that we can have a very good expression of the crop. Uh, and again, you can maintain an optimum population of four to five lakh uh, plants per hectare. And uh, this is that uh, spacing which you can follow that is 13 to 10 centimeter uh, for having, uh, suppose you can also reduce the plant to plant spacing, but the uh, tillering would be less. So if you have wider spacing, that is uh, the optimum spacing would be 13 to 10 centimeters. So you can have better tillering also. Uh, apart from these methods, uh, uh, there is one method which is called uh, Guli method uh, in Ragi. So this is followed in some uh, parts, especially in Karnataka, in Haveri and adjoining districts where uh, farmers, they are taking up this particular method. Uh, this particular method is a very, uh, inter means it is somewhat intensive method. Uh, but what farmers they do is that uh, the plant to plant spacing is about uh, one feet uh, wide. And uh, uh, they put uh, like a FIM into the pit and then uh, uh, so, they are able to get up to, there are reports saying up to 40 to 50 fertilizers they are able to get uh, by using this particular uh, method. Uh, uh, by this way, they are able to get uh, more yield as compared to the normal method. But uh, this is one of the intensive method. Uh, but still, wherever farmers, they have uh, inputs, uh, especially with regard to irrigation and uh, uh, where they can have fertilizers. So they can also follow this method where they can get uh, yield levels up to four to five tons easily uh, by having this particular method. Uh, coming to nutrient managers, management, these are the different uh, uh, like uh, doses which you can follow, especially uh, for the rain fed and irrigated. Uh, and then uh, the uh, entire phosphorus and potash, it can be applied at the time of soil preparation and uh, nitrogen, it can be applied in splits, especially like 50% at the time of uh, sowing and then uh, remaining 50%, it can be applied in splits. Uh, coming to irrigation management, uh, uh, so as I was mentioning, this is a rain fed crop. Uh, uh, again, it depends on the soil type. If it is a heavy soil, uh, black soil, then uh, the uh, 
selection interval you can have it once in 12 to 15 days uh, but if it is a light soil then it would be requiring six to eight days also but uh, uh, since it is mostly a rain fed crop uh, uh, in most places uh, farmers uh, they are not going for uh, irrigation especially uh, except uh, mandia where uh, uh, in Ravi season where they are uh, irrigating the crop and they are able to also able to get very high yields uh, as compared to the Harif crop. So uh, if you have limited irrigation, so these are some of the critical stages uh, where you may need to uh, irrigate them mainly during the tillering and then following the flowering stage and during the grain filling stage. This will be the critical stages you can have the irrigation so that we can have a better uh, crop stand as well as the better yield. Uh, coming to weed management, as of now, we don't have any commercial weed side. Uh, uh, mostly like farmers, uh, where they go for uh, line sowing, they use uh, tractor drawn implement uh, uh, by intercultivator. They uh, weed up between the rows and then between the plants, they go for manual weeding. Uh, but uh, uh, there are uh, some pre emergent uh, uh, pesticides available like uh, isoprotron and oxyfluorophen. And uh, uh, there are some uh, reports where they also reported uh, 240 is also one of the uh, chemical which you can take it for post-emergent uh, weedicide. But uh, uh, there are also reports saying that uh, it will also uh, stunten the growth of this particular crop. But uh, wherever farmers they are growing, uh, they are going for manual weeding. So to uh, effective, uh, suppose if you are going for transplanting, you may not uh, require uh, too many uh, weeding, but if you're going for direct sowing, then you may require at least uh, two effective hand weeding so for uh, uh, removing the weeds as well as for the having a good uh, crop of the phenomenon. So these are some of the disease management, like as I was mentioning, uh, blast is one of the major disease and uh, these are some of the uh, methods uh, for controlling. Uh, mainly, uh, we don't apply any chemical uh, fungicide. Uh, but uh, mainly we tackle by using uh, host plant resistance where uh, the uh, in the varieties itself we will uh, develop varieties which are resistant to uh, uh, finger and the neck blast. So we have also varieties as I was mentioning GPU28 is one variety where it is having uh, resistant uh, to neck and finger blast. Again about insects, uh, uh, the major pest is the stem borer. Uh, so here uh, we don't have any organic method, uh, mostly like uh, chlorophyriposs and even we have one chemical which is called uh, Coragen, it's a trade, trade name. So these uh, chemicals are again effective against the stem borer. Apart from that, uh, whenever the field is dry, we can also have uh, this aphids is also one of the uh, constant, especially with regard to the uh, pest problem. Uh, so these two are the major pests. Apart from that, uh, all other uh, pests, whatever is indicated, they are all minor and it is not very sporadic. So coming to the varieties, uh, uh, these are different states it's where it's grown and these are some of uh, varieties which are popular across states. So this will also be circulating in the write-up which we'll be uh, providing to the participants. Uh, coming to the intercropping, uh, uh, like uh, finger millet, goes well uh, with uh, uh, pigeon pea and as well as with uh, these are some of the very successful intercropping methods uh, which have been reported in different states. So here you can see like a pigeon pea, soybean and field beans, so black ram also. So these are some of the successful intercropping methods which is followed in uh, finger millet with other crops. Coming to the varieties, uh, so these are some of the varieties and the photograph of these varieties. So as I mentioned, this is GPU-28. This is a old variety, but uh, still it is grown. Uh, this is uh, a recent uh, variety that is KMR301, especially grown in parts of Karnataka, and it is a long duration and uh, uh, gives very good yield. Uh, so coming to the maturity, I haven't mentioned that. Uh, so there are three types of variety. That is the early varieties, which are maturing in 95 to 100 days. It goes up to 105 days also in some locations and medium duration varieties which mature in 115 to 120 days and the late maturing varieties which mature about 125 to 130 days and beyond. So this particular variety is a long duration variety that is KMR301. Apart from that, we have KMR340. This is a white finger millet variety. Like uh, uh, finger millet mainly we know it as a colored grain, but uh, there are varieties which are also having the white berry cup. So this KMR340 is a white finger millet. And this VL37 is from, is from Almora and uh, especially a short duration variety, especially uh, in hills, the short duration varieties are highly preferred. 
again these are some of the long duration varieties mr6 is a long duration variety gpu 28 is a short duration variety and uh, this is one variety which is uh, having wide adapt adaptability and is grown across states gpu 67 is one variety is a national release and uh, in karnataka kmr60 is also a variety which is a early variety and is also popular among the farmers too. so these are some of the uh, again the varieties but it is in the maturity stage uh, vl352 um, in Almora, and uh, it can also be grown across states. Uh, VL376, uh, uh, though it's developed from Almora, this is for uh, release for a central release. So, uh, this particular variety, which matures in 100 days, uh, it has uh, also good yield. Uh, like, uh, as you know, that whenever you go for uh, uh, farmers are looking for more yield, they go for long duration varieties. But uh, uh, we are able to have some early varieties which are also having a uh, very good yield as compared to the late maturing varieties. Coming to harvesting, uh, uh, like we had a very good uh, presentation during the earlier session where uh, he was, uh, uh, speaker also was explaining about the different uh, mechanical methods, uh, but uh, uh, presently mostly it is harvested using the manual method uh, and uh, these are some of the tractor down implements where they're using it for the threshing of the panicle. Uh, but uh, now considering uh, uh, like a labor intensive for harvesting as well as sowing. So we need to go for uh, more mechanization. So uh, the future would be for uh, uh, mechanical agriculture. So these are some of the uh, mechanical devices like uh, this is a reaper where you can cut down the crop and you can bundle it so that the store is not uh, damaged. So it can be uh, fed to the cattle, but uh, there are also farmers there where they're following the combined pressure where uh, we'll not be able to get a very good uh, quality of the store. So these are some of the implements developed by one uh, from VPKS Almora where they also develop a pressure uh, where they can take up threshing of this uh, finger millet as well as other millets also. So these are some of the specifications of this uh, harvesting uh, threshing devices, like uh, emissions. So I will not be going into the improvement part because uh, uh, because it will take more time. So just this is one slide where I want to tell that these are the different uh, traits, target traits, where uh, as a scientist, we are looking into that so that uh, uh, we can uh, have a better uh, yield as well as uh, quality in the millet. So we are working on blast is one of the constraint. We are looking for maturity types, grain yield, grain quality and uh, early maturity so this and again uh, when we wanted to promote finger millet especially for the rabi or uh, summer season uh, temperature and moisture stress is also one of the important uh, aspects so we're also identifying varieties as well as uh, germplasm lines which are uh, uh, especially tolerant uh, uh, during the post flowering stages where we are looking for the uh, varieties stress tolerance varieties so this is all about finger millet. So next I'll be quickly going through the little millet. Uh, so I'm also taking care of the little millet uh, program at IMR. So these are the different names uh, in which this little millet is known. Uh, but uh, commonly like people would be knowing it as a Sama, especially in the Southern part and uh, uh, in Hindi it is called as Kutki and in uh, Odisha it is called Swa and uh, in different languages it's known by different names. So these are some of the common names uh, of the little millet. Uh, often uh, people uh, tend to confuse with the proso millet, but uh, mainly in the proso and little millet, they are of the same genus, but uh, little millet have a relatively very smaller seed size as compared to the proso millet. And if you want to identify uh, little millet and proso millet, uh, proso millet mainly it will have that what you call uh, 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 thorn, thorn type will be there in the bottom of the stem so that you can easily uh, differentiate the uh, uh, coming to little millet, uh, again, it is a uh, finger millet, as I was mentioning, it is a, uh, it has a origin from Africa, but uh, uh, the crops like little millet and uh, coda millet, they are indigenous to India, where uh, uh, the vast diversity is in India and uh, uh, India is uh, one state where 100% of the production is happening, especially for little millet and the coda millet. So uh, again, uh, if you see uh, little millet, uh, uh, the area is around uh, 1.62 lakh hectares, uh, but uh, there are two states where it is widely grown. Uh, one is Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh, uh, especially the hill stations as well as uh, um, in the 
plains also especially in karnataka where it also grown uh, so the variety requirement is also different across uh, different growing conditions which i'll be explaining in the next slides uh, there is not much uh, problem with regard to uh, like a disease or pest problem is not much there in uh, little millet uh, but uh, uh, shoot fly is one problem across all the millets uh, but it is not very prevalent uh, in the farmers field and coming to nutritional, it is also uh, nutritional rich uh, in iron and fiber and many other minerals. Uh, uh, Dr. Malati and Dr. Venkateshwar has already explained in the yesterday session uh, detailed about uh, the nutritional aspects of different millets. Uh, coming to variability, uh, maybe many would tend to confuse uh, because uh, uh, there is a huge variability in little millet. So uh, this particular slide, as you can see, the first one we call it as a uh, it is also a little millet, but we call it as a nana race. It almost looks like a grass type, but uh, it is still, uh, some land races are still grown in the farmer's field. Uh, this particular type, uh, mainly it has problem with shattering, but uh, the advantage is uh, it is having very less maturity. That is, it matures early maturity. That is, it matures in 80 days. Uh, contradicting to this, uh, this particular uh, race is called Robusta. And this particular type is uh, grown, uh, especially in Odisha, we could see. And also in some parts of uh, Maharashtra, where uh, some varieties like Pule, Ekadeshi, they are of uh, this type. They are called the Robusta types. Here, the, as the name suggests, it is having very robust plant type. And the panicle is bunchy type. Mostly it looks like a rice type panicle. And uh, grains will be smaller in the Robusta race. Maybe a uh, farmer's point of view or the processor point of view, maybe... Uh, uh, the processing would be very difficult uh, when uh, we wanted to take up, uh, uh, like since it's a very small size seed, so getting a better rice sequel would be difficult. Uh, but uh, there are some varieties which are having some of the traits combined from these two, and uh, they are, uh, we call it as like intermediate type. Uh, so varieties like uh, BL6 and DHLM36-3, they are of this type. Although this panicle looks like very sparse grass type, but as compared to Robusta, this particular type gives more yield as compared to the best, these two types. So mainly because this is having more tillers as well as the better seed size. So as I was mentioning, uh, two states uh, like uh, 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 Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh where it is uh, widely grown uh, and also consumed. And uh, this is some of the statistics across the different states and the productivity is low. It is around 18, 800 kg per hectare. Uh, but uh, recently, due to the last five years, there are many varieties which have been developed, especially in little millet. And uh, over time, it has improved from 1800 to 1000 kg per hectare. And some farmers are able to get up to 1.5 tons, 2 tons per hectare. So, these are some of the potential districts uh, where it is grown. Uh, this uh, particular will also be in the, uh, this one, what you call the nodes, and will be circulating to all the participants. Uh, so this is one variety which is uh, early type JK8 which can mature in 80 to 85 days. It's an old variety and uh, it's from uh, Jabalpur and uh, uh, so this is also having a what you call uh, a uh, not a very sp uh, open type but uh, in between the open and the robusta type. Uh, but uh, there are uh, we are trying to improvise this particular variety especially in the early uh, duration group. So this is uh, DHLM 36 dash which is a medium maturity, which matures in 90 to 95, uh, 95 to 100 days. And uh, uh, this is uh, grown across states, though it is released mainly for the state of Karnataka, but uh, it is giving a better yield, especially because of the high tillering as well as the better grain size. Uh, this is a robusta type. We have the OLM 203 variety. So as I was mentioning, it is a robusta type and uh, it can also give, uh, if you have very good uh, input, like uh, a long growing season, and with better uh, input fertilizers, it can give up to 20 to 25 quintals per hectare. But mainly the problem is with the seed size, which is very small as compared to the other type just mentioned previously. So these are different uh, varieties, which this this also will be sharing, uh, especially in the uh, notes, and then we'll be circulating uh, where you can have the information of all the different varieties, the maturity groups, and the special characters and area of adaptation. In, uh, yeah, uh, coming to the season, again, this is also a rain-fed crop. Uh, so not much difference as compared to the other uh, millets. It is almost the same. And these are again the different varieties across the different uh, states. And again, the spacing and other things are also same as compared to the finger millet. So I'm not stressing on these points here. Spacing is again 22.5 or uh, 13 to 10 centimeter, which is where uh, 
we have a uh, good spacing, we can also have a better tillering uh, as compared to the broadcasting type where we'll be not able to maintain the spacing. So these are the menus and fertilizers uh, dose for the different states which are being followed and different weeds, uh, weed control measures. Uh, again, we don't have any post-emergent uh, control measure, but uh, as I was mentioning, 2,4-D is one uh, which is being recommended. Uh, uh, not recommended, not widely recommended, but uh, some of the places it's being followed. But mostly it is the what you call the tractor drawn intercultivation. Uh, by using this, you can have the weeding between rows and uh, between plants, is mostly using the hand weeding. So, coming to the cropping systems, uh, it's also grown with little millet with other pulses like uh, black gram. So, harvesting uh, depends on the maturity. Like as I was mentioning, there are different maturity groups uh, uh, from 80 days up to 120 days. The Robusta type is 120 days, which I was mentioning, and the Nano types varieties, which we can mature, like JK8, it can mature in 80 to 85 days. So, there is a huge variability for the maturity, especially in the little millet. So, grain yield, it is uh, average, you can get up to 12 to 15 quintals per hectare, and straw about 20 to 25 quintals per hectare, but uh, uh, you can have much higher when you take up uh, the varieties like Robusta where you can have four to five quintals per hectare strawberry. So these are the variability, panicle types, uh, uh, like a bunchy type, uh, open types, and uh, like broom, broom type, and so many, we have so much variability is there in little millet, like at IMR, uh, we are following pure line selection and trying to develop upon improved varieties. And uh, the, since they are all very small sized uh, uh, spikelets, so it's difficult to cross and then evolve new varieties, but still we have standardized the method for in little millet as well as in all the millets where we have devised a crossing method to cross between uh, elite genotypes and then evolve new varieties. So that is already in uh, process. So these are some of the variability uh, for a grain color and size, as you can see here. Uh, so uh, there are some germplasm lines uh, which are having very high uh, grain size, but uh, uh, there are not much varieties, released varieties. Uh, we have around 2 to 2.5 gram per thousand seed, but in germplasm, we have up to 3.5. So in little millet, the crop improvement program, we are also trying to improve the grain size so that uh, it is also a yield improvement rate, which is useful for the farmers. And again, for the processors, uh, having a good quality, uh, uh, like rice, that is a, uh, after dehulling, what we call it's a rice. So better with uh, rice recovery. So we are also working on this uh, intensively where we wanted to improve the seed size in little millet. So again, you uh, can also see the variability like the pigmented types, both are uh, the robusta types, but you have the pigmented types. Uh, there is uh, some land races called Pedasama, especially in Vijayanagaram and some parts where it's grown, the pigmented type. So again, the variability where we are undergoing selections, uh, some of the lines, uh, which is almost look like a rice type panicle, it is very heavy. So uh, some of them are uh, even lodging. So we are also uh, developing ideal plant type where we non-lodging type so that we can have high grain yield as well as with uh, superior agronomic traits like non-lodging type. Again, the variability and the, for the panicle shape, size and uh, uh, the grains. Uh, this is my last slide. Uh, so over years, uh, like we are working in little millet, and uh, uh, during 2020, we could release one variety uh, in little millet, especially. Uh, this is again the uh, intermediate type, which I was mentioning between. So the variety is CLMV1. So this uh, had very uh, high uh, iron and as well as the protein content. So this is one variety. Uh, Biofortified variety, which was uh, dedicated to the nation by our Honorable Prime Minister uh, during the World Food Day celebra celebration that is October 2020. So, thank you all. Uh, thank you for patience, uh, patient listening. And if you have any questions,